Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. And topping the list for us tonight, a shooting inside a community center. The victim, a 10-year-old, the suspect, just 14. Police insisting it was an accident, that the boy was not targeted. All this happening at the YWCA's Phyllis Wheatley Center on South Cruz Street. That's where WAT 6 on your side reporter Molly O'Brien spent the day learning about the investigation. KPD telling us they responded to a call of a shooting at this YWCA earlier this morning around 9:45. A 10-year-old boy was shot in what police describe as an accidental discharge as a gun went off inside a 14-year-old's book bag. Police say that 14-year-old left the scene and was found a few blocks away, eventually being placed into custody. Police say they found two handguns in the suspect's bag. The 10-year-old was transported to the UT Medical Center. We're told the victim remains in critical condition but has since been stabilized. Based on our investigation, this was not a, an intentional or a targeted shooting. This was an accidental discharge, an accident. Um, and uh, really proud of how quickly our officers responded to the scene, uh, secured the scene, located the suspect, and also obviously the, the evidence, preserved the evidence from this incident. The 14-year-old suspect has been charged with two counts of unlawful possession of a weapon and one count of reckless endangerment. Erlin says KPD is still investigating how this 14-year-old got the guns. Additional charges could be coming. In East Knoxville, Molly O'Brien, WATE 6 on your side. All right, Molly, thank you. The investigation into how the teen, as you heard Molly mention, get, got access to the weapons is underway tonight. Late today, we learned that the center's summer kids and play program will be open tomorrow as scheduled. Now, the center saying, quote, we understand that many families rely on this program for summer child care. Going on to say we will be open for those children and have counselors available on site to help them process this traumatic experience. Earlier in the day, the YWCA sent out a statement saying, quote, the safety of the children and staff is the utmost priority of the YWCA. The YWCA staff and board of directors extend our sincere sympathy to everyone involved, especially the children on site, the injured person, and their loved ones. Please join us in wrapping all of our young people in your love and prayers. Next for you tonight on The Big 7, the faithful getting to hear from the new interim leader of Knoxville's Catholic Diocese. Behind me right now, you are looking at the live stream from inside the Cathedral of the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus with a mass currently underway. Taking part tonight, Archbishop Shelton Fobb, named by the Vatican after B Bishop Richard Sticca announced his retirement yesterday amid controversy and criticism. Fobb will lead until a new bishop is named and installed. His temporary role is dubbed Apostolic Administrator. Fobb putting out a statement today saying, Together we will prayfully address all the pastoral needs before us. Now, Bishop Stick, as we told you, served the Knoxville Diocese since 2009, just the third bishop in its history, overseeing the fundraising and building of that cathedral, but also facing criticism for his handling of claims of sexual abuse by clergy members, with alleged victims arguing in lawsuits that Sticka and the diocese tried to keep the cases quiet. Sticka told us yesterday that the criticism did factor in his decision, but more so he emphasized his health challenges including type 1 diabetes that sent him to the hospital multiple times during his tenure in Knoxville. Also on the Big 7, a grand jury finds there's enough evidence to keep going with a murder case against a Knoxville man in a stabbing from back in April. The grand jury indicting Kenneth Hall on charges of second-degree murder and aggravated assault. We told you about this back in April when Shawanda Irwine, Arnwine rather, showed up at a Knoxville fire department station on Sevier Avenue saying that she had been stabbed and that it happened in the 1400 block of Moody Avenue. EMS treated Arn Wine at the fire station, but she died at UT Medical Center. Police later arrested Hall walking along James White Parkway. Witnesses told police that Arn Wine and a man had gotten into an argument when the man pulled out a knife, stabbed her, and then ran. Of course, we'll keep following the case as it moves through the court system. Another story here tonight on the Big 7. We're waiting to hear more from Knoxville police about a deadly wreck yesterday afternoon. It happened right around 5 at the intersection of Rutledge Pike and Spring Hill Road. Police investigators say a car was trying to turn left when it was hit by a pickup. The driver of the car died. KPD crash investigators spent the evening trying to figure out what happened. We don't yet know the name of the driver who was killed in the incident. 
Also tonight on the Big 7 and 7, a new bus network for Knoxville Area Transit has been released to the public. It's all part of the CAT Reimagined Project and includes several changes based on public feedback. Now, the changes include the addition of a, a new route from Millertown that would also serve uh, the O'Connor Senior Center, uh, Broadway Towers, Washington Pike, and Walmart East. Plus route changes to better serve Austin East High School, Inskip Pool, and Main Street, as well as temporary route adjustments until pedestrian infrastructure and traffic signal issues can be resolved, namely on Division Street and along Clinton Highway. Now, the recommended route network is available for viewing on CAT's project website. That is katreimagined.com. The Knoxville Transportation Authority will hold a public hearing on July 27th. That will be at 3 o'clock at the City County Building to hear comments on the recommended network. If the plan is improved, or approved rather, implementation is currently scheduled for August of 2024. Also tonight on the Big 7, the housing crisis in East Tennessee is a growing problem for home buyers and renters. Prices keep rising and the number of people needing affordable housing is also growing. Uh, we're focusing on a group known as FAHI. It's the Federation of Appalachian Housing Enterprises. The group works to provide resources to help, well, people get into affordable housing. The need is there, FAHI says, with 22% of renters having trouble affording high rent. And, well, someone earning a minimum wage would need to work between 72 and 89 hours a week just to afford a two-bedroom apartment. Fahi wants to help those people and at the same time help out the economy. We talked with one of Fahi's members today. I think this is in numbers, right? So we are a small nonprofit, as are most members of Fahi. We're all small, small nonprofits. So by partnering together through Fahi, we're able to increase our impact and advocate as one voice instead of a bunch of smaller voices, uh, which helps us to try to pull in that investment from state and federal government, which in turn helps us to increase our impact. We met with uh, him at the Knoxville Leadership Foundation. It's also a Fahi partner helping grow the inventory of affordable housing in Knoxville. Fahi also says it's hoping to get government approval for $21 million for other affordable housing projects. So there are lots of plans just waiting for the next step. Of course, we'll keep you updated. On your side, tonight on the Big 7, it's going to get even hotter soon. That means it's time to think about ways to save money and keep cool. KUB sent out some ideas today. It's advice that uh, we've heard before, largely focused on how to keep your air conditioner running as little as possible. They recommend setting the thermostat to about 78 degrees in the summer. KUB says each degree you turn the dial higher saves about 3% on your power bill. Other steps, uh, make sure your cooling system is working the best it can. Change those filters or maybe even have a tech come and take a look at your system. Don't cool an empty home. Turning up the temperature when you leave or using a smart thermostat to schedule the AC can save you money as well. Also, fans, uh, got to have them running, whether they're on the ceiling or just sitting on the floor or a desk. can always help you tolerate the warmer temps when the AC isn't chilling as much. Uh, close the blinds to the curtains during the day on the sides of your house facing the sun. And try not to use the oven or stove all that much and postpone chores like washing or drying clothes to non-peak hours to ease the pressure on that electric grid. Outside your house, cut off any unnecessary lights. Don't water the lawn more than twice per week and hike up the blade on the lawnmower. Longer grass doesn't need as much water to grow. Meanwhile, the American Red Cross wants you and your neighbors to know that the heat comes with a real risk to your health, sending out a reminder that excessive heat kills more people than well, really all other weather events, even floods in recent years. So what can you do? Well, have a plan, whether it means preparing to stay cool at home or at work, and even when the power goes out, know where you go if you have to cool off, whether that's family, neighbors, public place with air conditioning. Make sure you have a disaster kit in your home with water, and of course, stay hydrated anytime the heat or humidity rises. Be sure to check on older members of your family. They're more vulnerable. Stay inside if you can, and if you have to work outside, just try to stay out of the heat or the sun for extended periods of time, or make sure you grab a hat like that guy's got on right there. Also from the Red Cross, this advice, pay attention to the forecast.